and early days when you're first exposed to like you mentioned the the mindfulness training um did you find it overwhelming like you, like you said you hadn't been exposed to it in junior days and and for the first six years was it quite hard to transfer it into your normal routine or did it, or did it just resonate with you straight away had, had, for someone who hasn't done it that's listening and is interested obviously hearing it from yourself that it was effective um yeah. how did you come to integrating it in, and to make it work for yourself yeah well my first like um opinion on yeah like a psychologist at the football club was like you know you're only going there if you've got mental health problems or you're mentally weak yeah and it you know like we know that that's wrong but you, everyone kind of thought that at the time and you know like the mentally tough players just get on with it and mm-hmm. suppress and compartmentalize their issues in order to perform and we know now that that's you know that really detrimental um to your mental health and do you do anything or work with anyone, particularly in the off season, away from the club to work on your individual strength and weaknesses, strengths and weaknesses? Um, yeah, I've, I've sort of got into a bit of a habit when I was um, in my first at my first club um, of training on my own because it, most guys at an interstate club usually move away or go back to their home states and usually either training on their own or with you know mates or. Lucky, uh, you know, maybe a teammate if they're there in the same city. So I actually enjoy just doing a lot of my training on my own and getting fit and strong, having a bit of time to myself. I'm a highly motivated guy and I can get away with doing a lot of things on my own. But certainly, like, when it comes to, you know, the football side of things, um, you can't be doing everything on your own and, um, you know, just sort of link up with teammates that are available to me, um, which I found is pretty easy at the moment because... None of the Essendon boys are able to get out of Victoria, so we're always at the footy club working on on things um, in our spare time. Yeah. And then is there anything you do the day before a game um, that you feel really benefits you? Um, I was pretty – had a, you know, pretty structured routine early on and, you know, felt I had to, had to nail that for me to, you know, set myself up for a really good game. But, you know, it's amazing what – how things can change in two years with, you know, COVID and hubs and, you know, having to fly in, fly out for games. And, you know, I've just sort of had to accept that, you know, I don't need everything to be perfect or have to nail the same thing every time before a game to, to play a good game. Yep. Um, so I've been really flexible. Um, it's probably, you know, it sounds pretty lame, but probably the most, you know, important thing I've tried to get done is just have a good night's sleep um the night before a game or at least two nights before a game just sleeps we know sleep's the most important thing for performance for cognition and for alertness and you know if i can get a good night's sleep then you know that's you know 80 percent of the job done and then you work on your nutrition and you know your energy um intake pre-game but yeah like i'm pretty pretty relaxed these days um nothing yeah i'd love to be able to give an example of i do you know, wheat picks every day, or I listen to this one song, or I walk yeah. or do this thing. But I, the truth is, no, I don't. Not anymore. That's for sure. What is your plan for life after footy? Have you thought that far down? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's still a little, a little while away. Um, you know, I love to play football for as long as I can. But um, you know, at the moment, I, I could see something happening. You know, overseas for me for around twelve, you know, twelve months or so after football, I. I'm doing a commerce finance degree at the moment and I'll have that done pretty shortly. And then, you know, I've got an idea in my mind where I wouldn't mind doing some overseas study, um, potentially in Europe and maybe just packing up for, for 12 months and taking, um, you know, Georgie and any future future kids over there for 12 months and, yeah, experiencing life out of Australia and then come back and resume life in whatever career that is. It's probably going to be in some form of finance but um yeah we'll wait and see if you have a poor game or a narrow loss how do you boost personal and team confidence to get up for the next week that's a good question yeah that's a it's a great question um and that's probably like you know the answers in itself there is you know next week comes around pretty quickly so you sort of you're forced to to move on and, and address a bad game pretty quickly um so i mean you play a, game, a bad game and the first thing is, you know, sort of acknowledging and accepting it and trying to find, you know, where 
the team went wrong or where the individual went wrong. And, you know, so you go through the game review and address that and accept it, um, accept that you're human and it's an imperfect game, but don't wash over where you can improve. And then you just go about it, you train it that week and you get ready for the next game because you haven't got that much time. And if you're going into the next game, you know, thinking, carrying things from last week, you're just going to set yourself up for another bad game. So um, my experience in football around the best play, players I played with and against and, you know, as a, as a team is um, the quicker you can, you know, sort of free yourself up and let go of the bad games, um, you know, the better off you're going to be for the next one. Yeah. Hey, Dale, what, a spe- what specific training do you do for your explosiveness? Um, yeah, if you want to run fast, then run fast. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's this, yeah, it sounds simple. Um, I, you know, it was Lockie Wilmot and John Quinn used to tell me this all the time. I didn't really quite understand what it meant, but, um, and Jack, you're going to be able to share, shed more light on this than me. But yeah, you know, in the weights, in the gym, I, you know, do a lot of high, you know, high explosive movements, um, you know, powerful movements, um, if I'm doing strength, a strength lift, um, you know, it's usually supplemented with some sort of explosive movement um, um, in between sets. Um, but probably the biggest thing that's helped me in recent years is um, not trying to just tr- train, um, you know, the energy system or the, the the muscle, but also to train the efficiency of your movement. And that's where we sort of go back to my, what I've been doing with. Mark McGrath around, you know, increasing efficiency of my body rather than trying to increase, you know, my strength, my speed, my aerobic capacity. 